It is a good week to be a Disney fan. Hello everybody, Nikki Marr here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you all have had a fabulous week and are ready for another fun ranking video, but first and foremost, let me start off by saying that D23 this year did not have to go as hard as it did. No word of a lie, there are two things that I have been wishing and hoping for for the longest time and both of those wishes were granted. First and foremost, we are getting a full villain's land in the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World, which I am so unbelievably excited for with more villains meet and greets and even more villains rides. God, I'm so excited to see what that entire land brings. But the second item that I was very excited for actually brings us into the topic of today's video. And that item being a brand new nighttime parade for the Magic Kingdom in the Walt Disney World Resort. These concept images are so gorgeous and they gave me absolute goosebumps. And while I am so unbelievably excited for this brand new parade, I want to go through and rank all of the parades of the present and the past in today's video. Disney parades. I have so much to say on the topic. Disney parades for me are probably still one of the biggest sources of magic within the parks. I love a celebration in the streets with all of these characters, with some incredible music and also some really intricately beautiful floats. The parades are just an absolutely incredible part of the day. And so today we're going to do a full video ranking 15 of my all-time favorite Disney parades. If you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator here on YouTube and I also make magical content over on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. And you can find me on all of my platforms at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. So if you are excited for today's video and are ready to jump into all of these incredible parades, make sure to subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me and make sure to hit that like button so that way I know you guys really enjoyed the video. Now as always on this channel, we are going to head into some brief disclaimers and conditions before we get into the list today, but if you'd like to jump right into our ranking list, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and therefore I don't speak for the brand or the company and any and all opinions that are in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney characters, Disney parades, and Disney movies down in my comment section. So make sure to leave all of your thoughts and all of your memories of these incredible parades down in the comments. And thirdly for our disclaimers is a spoiler warning for all of the parades that we're going to be talking about on today's list. And now for our conditions for the list today. The parades that we're going to be ranking today must be a parade that is created by the Walt Disney Company. They can have appeared in the United States parks, but we are also going to be including a few over from our overseas parks. And I am primarily prioritizing parades that I personally have seen in person. So there are many parades around the world, past and present, that are just absolutely beautiful and perfect. However, if I haven't seen them, I'm going to be very hesitant to rank them. If I'm not mistaken, there are three parades on this list that I have not seen in person, but I have watched them all and I have absolutely obsessed over them and learned the music like the back of my hand. <laughs> and for the final condition, it can be a nighttime parade, a daytime parade, or a seasonal parade, which is a parade that only appears at a certain point of the year. And also because I know somebody's going to say it, we're also going to include cavalcades today. And keep in mind, for each of the parades, we are going to be discussing them as they appeared in their very final iteration. So if the parade is currently ongoing, I'm going to describe it in a way that you would currently see it today. But if a parade debuted a long time ago, then I'm going to be talking about it as it appeared at the very end of the run. Sometimes parade floats are taken in or swapped in and out. And so if I'm discussing it at a certain point in its run, I'm not going to necessarily include every single parade float that you might remember from a specific parade. And because there are so many iconic Disney parades, we are going to be limiting today's list to just 15. And you might be thinking that is a very small list. Correct, but I am going very in-depth with all of these parades today, especially because we have to talk about each individual float for each parade. So believe me, the docket is going to be full today, and I cannot be more excited for today's video. But now that we've got all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to start ranking some of Disney's most iconic parades. Oh, and one more thing really quick before we jump into the list, I do want to go over the brief list of talking points that we are going to touch on for each parade. First and foremost on the list of talking points, we are going to be talking about which park each parade has performed in. Secondly, we're going to be talking about the years that the parade performed in that park. And we're also going to be touching on whether this was a parade of the past or if it's one of the present that you can still see today. The third talking point is we're going to be talking about what kind of parade it is, meaning a cavalcade, a daytime parade, a nighttime parade, or a seasonal parade. The fourth talking point is going to be the music. And the fifth and final talking point that we are going to be touching on for each parade is probably going to be the longest talking 
starting point of any video, because we are going to be talking about all of the parade floats that appeared in each parade, as well as the majority of the characters that you could see performing in each parade. So yes, we have an absolutely full docket for the list today. I am so excited. Parades are one of my favorite things in the parks. And so without further ado, grab yourself a snack and a drink, sit back, relax, and let's talk about Disney's most iconic parades. We are starting off the list today all the way down at the bottom at number 15, which is the Disney's Stars and Motor Cars Parade. Now, Stars and Motor Cars Parade is a very different parade than what you usually see within a Disney park. This parade primarily takes iconic Disney characters and places them in motor cars in order to give them the visual of a celebrity. This parade is meant to honor the iconic films that they were in, and so they are treating these Disney characters like the stars of their movie. The Stars and Motor Cars Parade premiered at the Disney Hollywood Studios, although it used to be known as Disney's MGM Studios. This parade is no longer performing, however, it did run quite a while from 2001 all the way to 2008. Disney Stars and Motor Cars Parade was a regularly playing daytime parade, and you can pretty much see it every single day at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now, as for the music, I honestly love the music of this parade. It is basically a mixed up, mashed up medley of all Disney music. And what's interesting about this one again is that it's really one big continuous song. There wasn't necessarily specific songs playing for each car or each float. And in addition to the music, there was also an announcer that would announce each individual star on each motor car. Just for an example, as the Little Mermaid float would roll out, the announcer would come on and say, introducing the stars of the movie The Little Mermaid. He would then give a brief plot synopsis and introduce the characters of Ariel, Sebastian, and Flounder who appeared on the float. This was just such a fun parade because it really brought the characters into the real world, making them very celebrity-esque. And the music of this parade absolutely added to the entire feel. I highly recommend checking out the soundtrack if you are interested. But next we are going to go on to all of the parade floats or all of the motor cars that were included in the parade. In this parade, each motor car was specifically designed to have the general feel of the overall movie. I'm going to be listing all of the individual cars, however I'm probably just going to showcase my favorite ones. The parade floats included Toy Story, Mary Poppins, The Muppets, Star Wars, Mulan, Monsters, Inc., Aladdin, Hercules, The Disney Villains, Atlantis, The Little Mermaid, Bear in the Big Blue House, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and finally, Mickey and Minnie. I love this parade. I think it is absolutely iconic. I do miss it quite a bit, although it isn't nearly as iconic as a lot of other ones that are on this list today. So with that, we're going to move on up to number 14 on my list today, which is the Adventure Friends Cavalcade. Now, the Adventure Friends Cavalcade is such a fun celebration of a lot of characters that we don't normally get to see within the Disney parks. It is a cavalcade, so it's not necessarily a full-length 10-minute parade that you are used to seeing. However, getting to see so many rarer characters is just so fun, and it really fills the time. The Adventure Friends Cavalcade steps off within the Magic Kingdom at the Walt Disney World Resort. It began performing in the year 2022 and is currently ongoing. You can still see it within the Disney park. This parade is a cavalcade, meaning it is a smaller parade. It actually only has three parade floats. However, it does run every single day in the Magic Kingdom as long as weather permits. As for the music in this cavalcade, I absolutely love the music. It is repurposed from an old cavalcade, however, there are brand new lyrics that specifically fit all of the characters within the cavalcade. And as for the parade floats, there are just three parade floats and they are all very big and look like presents. However, the real stars of this cavalcade are the characters, as in front of each of the three floats, we see a bunch of rarer Disney characters dancing along to the music and having such a fun time time, and there are also characters on top of each float. Now, some of the characters that you can see in the Adventure Friends Cavalcade include Moana, Pocahontas, Mirabelle, Bruno, Marie, Jose Carioca, Panchito, a couple of our Jungle Book friends, as well as Mary Poppins and Bert, and Aladdin, Jasmine, and the Genie. And while there are a lot more characters that dance down the parade route, those are just a few of my favorites that I really love seeing every day. I love the Adventure Friends Cavalcade. It is a shorter parade, but I highly recommend watching it because it is a great way to see a ton of characters all at once. But next, we move on up to number 13 on my list, which is Disney Harmony in Color. Now for what Disney Harmony in Color lacks in a few areas of this parade, it more than makes up for it in its title, which is Color. Disney Harmony in Color actually plays in Hong Kong Disneyland Park. 
This parade began in the year 2023 and is currently ongoing, as in it can still be seen to this day. And Disney Harmony and Color is a regularly playing daytime parade. Now the music in this parade is not necessarily the most catching to me. And that's mainly because a lot of parades are very well known for their iconic catchy tunes. However, this one didn't necessarily capture my attention. There are a lot of parade soundtracks that I prefer to Harmony and Color. But again, for what it lacks for me in terms of music, it more than makes up for in the visuals. These parade floats are just absolutely stunning and let's get into them. Starting off our parade, we can see Tinkerbell as well as a lot of other classic Disney characters following behind her. We see floats for Zootopia, for Up, a princess float that includes Moana, Rapunzel, and Pocahontas. We see Coco and the Incredibles, followed by a few cars that include Buzz and Woody and Vanellope and Ralph. And we finish up the parade with the Big Hero 6 float, followed by the Princess Parade Dancers, followed by Mickey and Minnie's classic parade float. This parade is honestly so beautiful in terms of the visuals, and I love that it includes a lot of the Pixar branded movies. When it comes to a Disney parade, we're usually used to seeing just Disney characters, and there tends to be a shortage of Pixar characters. There might be one or two movies thrown in, but usually not more than that. But what I love about this parade is we get to see a lot more of our Pixar pals mixed in with our Disney friends. Now, Disney Harmony and Color is not one that I've seen in person, but I absolutely feel confident at ranking it at number 13 on today's list. But with that, we're gonna move on up to number 12 on my list, not straying too far from the topic of parades I haven't seen in person, which is Disney Stars on Parade. Disney Stars on Parade has probably some of the most intricately designed parade floats. They are so detailed, and the entire theme of this parade is steampunk. You can see a lot of like cogs and a lot of steampunk elements put together on this parade float and it's honestly so beautiful. Disney Stars on Parade resides in the Disneyland Paris Park and it ran from the years 2017 to 2020. And while it did go away briefly during the pandemic, it returned in the year 2022 and can still currently be seen. It is ongoing without any sort of ending date in sight. Disney Stars on Parade is a daytime parade and runs very regularly within the park. And very much like Harmony and Color, the music for this one isn't the most memorable in my opinion, although I do like it better than Disney Harmony and Color. Disney Stars on Parade really caught my attention in the parade floats department, so we are going to jump into that now. Disney Stars on Parade begins with a Sensational Six float, which is all of the Sensational Six characters up in a steampunk tower. There is a giant book hanging over Mickey and Minnie, and this is just an absolutely gorgeous parade float. There is then a Toy Story float, a Lion King float, and then a Peter Pan skull rock. The parade then introduces us to a giant crush float from the movie Finding Nemo. We then get to see one of two Disney parades that currently has a Maleficent dragon in it, which is the Sleeping Beauty float. The Maleficent dragon float is absolutely beautiful in this one. It is taken steampunk to the absolute max. And then finally, Disney Stars on Parade ends with a princess float and a Frozen segment. I absolutely 100% praise this parade for its intricate detail in all of the floats. I highly recommend watching a video that tends to zoom in really close to these floats so you can see all of the details. And while I haven't seen this one in person, I really hope I get to visit the Disneyland Paris Park soon so that way I get to see this one in person. But next we're moving on up to number 11 on my list, back to the parades that I have seen in person, which is number 11, which is Mickey's Soundsational Parade. Now, while we no longer have this parade, I absolutely loved it when I got to see it. Mickey's Soundsational Parade is a celebration of all of the music of Disney's most iconic movies over the year. It includes not only Disney movies with iconic music, but also music that comes from different cultures, so you sometimes see parade floats that you normally wouldn't if it gives you a variation in music. Mickey's Soundsational Parade could be seen at the Disneyland Park in Anaheim, California, and it ran from the the years 2011 to 2017, took a one-year break, and then returned only in 2019. Mickey's Soundsational Parade was a daytime parade that was replaced by the current daytime parade that you can see in Disneyland, which we'll be talking about very soon. <laughs> and as for the music in this parade, I think this one definitely has some of the most iconic music, and the theme song of this one is 
absolutely so catchy. It's a music celebration and you are going to hear about it. <laughs> so yes, this is one soundtrack that I definitely do not feel any shame playing in the car. <laughs> now as for our parade floats, let's get into these because it's really going to give you a glimpse of what music appeared in this parade. We begin with a Mickey and Minnie band parade float where Mickey himself is playing the drums. We then see an Aladdin float, a Little Mermaid float, next a float with the three caballeros comes in, followed by four of our classic princesses who include Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora, and Belle. Next is the Lion King and Princess and the Frog, and we end the parade with Peter Pan, and Mary Poppins. And in all honesty, Mary Poppins is such a great way to end this parade. And this float is honestly so gorgeous in design. Yes, while I love Mickey's Sensational Parade and I do miss it very, very much, I am very glad that it exists and that we can still listen to the soundtrack. And what I love about this one is, yes, parades are very well known for their iconic music, but this one directly references it. And this parade goes out of its way to make it known that this one is all about the music. Yeah, I miss the Sensational Parade a lot, but I also like what replaced it. So let's continue on. Next, we move on up to number 10 on my list which is Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade. Talking about our first seasonal parade of the list, Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade is of course the Christmas parade that plays, and it is just gorgeous. And what makes this parade even better is that it plays while it is snowing on Main Street. The holiday spirit is in the air when this parade dances down Main Street, and I absolutely love it. Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time can be seen at the Magic Kingdom at the Walt Disney World Resort, and it played seasonally from the years 2000 2007 to 2019, and after a brief break for the pandemic, it returned seasonally in 2021, and it is currently ongoing. However, be aware that you won't necessarily see this parade unless it is around Christmas time. And in Disney time, that's basically the months of November and December. The Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade music is absolutely incredible. It takes a mashup of not only all of the iconic Christmas songs that you know that aren't necessarily Disney, and mixes it in with a lot of Disney audios that just make for a big mashup of Christmas Disney magic. And all of the wonder of the soundtrack, mixed with all of the beautiful snow that is pouring down, mixed with these parade floats, there is no way to not feel festive. So let's talk about these parade floats because they also have characters that we don't normally get to see. At the beginning of the parade, we see some classic characters dancing down Main Street right in front of a giant parade float that has Mickey and Minnie in front of their beautiful Christmas tree. This is a sight to behold for the beginning of a Christmas time parade. Next, we move on to Olaf standing in front of a gorgeous little house, followed by Kristoff and Anna walking in front of Elsa, who is standing in front of Wandering Oaken's trading post. And in between these floats are actually skiers who are on little rollerblades, which is also a really great detail. Next, we have Vanellope in her beautiful candy car, followed by Chip, Dale, and Clarice, who are in front of a gorgeous gingerbread house. Next, we're brought into Clarabelle's kitchen. We get to see Goofy's candy machine. And then we get into the princess segment, of which we get to see Snow White and her prince dancing on a beautiful little float, followed by Cinderella and Prince Charming in her coach. And finally, a beautiful silver and blue parade float that contains the rest of the princesses with their princes, which is a very rare sight within a Disney parade. Next, we move on to the toy segment where we see Toy Story, and then finally ending off with Santa's workshop and Santa himself. There is no better way for a Disney fan to get in the Christmas spirit than this parade soundtrack and by seeing this parade. I absolutely love it, and I hope I get to see it again very soon. But with that, we move on up to number nine on my list, which is a bit of a rarer one that I don't think a lot of people are gonna know. At number nine is the Tapestry of Dreams, or also known as the Tapestry of Nations Parade, which was a gorgeous parade that played to celebrate the millennium. Now, while I technically did get to see this one, I was very young at the time, so I barely remember getting to see this parade. But I am so glad that videos and audio clips still exist, so that way we can still enjoy this beautiful parade many years later. The Tapestry of Nations Tapestry of Dreams parade was actually played at Epcot. And while Epcot has seen very few parades over the years, this is one that definitely fits. The Tapestry of Nations and Dreams Parade played from the year 1999 to 2003. It was a daytime parade that could be seen every single day in Epcot, and this parade route would actually go all the way around World Showcase. And we haven't seen a parade in Epcot Park for a while, but I would so be down for another one, wouldn't you? <laughs> 
Now this music is absolutely stunning. It is very difficult to describe, but my goodness, is it absolutely beautiful. And what's also interesting about this parade is that it doesn't necessarily have big moving floats. The majority of this parade was actually the performers who would march down across World Showcase, either on stilts or carrying these giant puppets above their heads. Each one of them was very different and had very different meaning and symbolism. I can very easily remember the big intricate details of these puppets. And while they weren't necessarily Disney themed, they were so iconic that I can't help but associate them with the Disney company. Like when I see the shape or see something that reminds me of one of them, I immediately think of Disney. But yes, I love this parade. I honestly miss it quite a bit, even though I barely remember it. But I absolutely had to mention it on today's list, considering it is that beautiful and that iconic without having a single Disney character represented in the entire parade. Oh, I just love it. And I wish I was just a bit older at the time, so that way I could still remember the majority of it. <laughs> but next we move on up to number eight on my list, which is the Magic Happens Parade. Magic Happens is quite a beautiful parade. And again, what I love about it so much is that we get to see some characters that we don't normally get to see otherwise. The Magic Happens Parade performs in the Disneyland Park in Anaheim, California. And while it began very briefly in the year 2020 and had to shut down with the parks due to the pandemic, it reopened in the year 2023 and is still currently playing without any sign of slowing down. <laughs> the Magic Happens Parade is a daytime parade. However, it has been seen before to play as a nighttime show, which is also quite gorgeous. But it does play regularly and you can see it on the regular in the Disneyland Park. The music for this parade is very fun as it is a very up-tempo score and it's music that really just makes you want to get up and dance. Like it has such a fun beat and all of the Disney characters get so into the music. Now let's get into the parade floats because there are some iconic ones that I cannot wait to talk about. First and foremost, we see Sorcerer Mickey leading the parade, which is so cool. But next we move on to Moana, Coco, Frozen, The Princess and the Frog, The Sword and the Stone, which is one we never get to see, and this float includes Merlin and Arthur, and also Sleeping Beauty, which is another very beautiful float at the end. It has her castle in the back, and Aurora and Philip dance beautifully to this music. I love the Magic Happens Parade. Although this is not one that I've seen in person, I do love it very much and have it memorized like the back of my hand. I find very good use for my time. <laughs> but yes, this one is just beautiful. Hoping that I get back out to the Disneyland Park very soon in order to see this beautiful daytime parade. Now next we're gonna move on up to number seven on my list, which is an absolute gem in the Disney community and a piece of iconic Disney history which is the Main Street Electrical Parade. Now, many of you may be thinking, whoa, that is such an iconic parade. Why is it all the way down at number seven? We are gonna talk about it, don't you worry. The Main Street Electrical Parade is probably one of the longest running parades that has ever been run by the Disney Company. It is also the parade that has probably traveled the most between different parks, as it has played in not just one park, but multiple. Known for its iconic music and the dazzling parade floats, this one is absolutely a piece of Disney history that will always go down in the books. Now, the Main Street Electrical Parade premiered at the Disneyland Park over in Anaheim, California, and it could be seen in the Disneyland Park from 1972 to 1974, then again from 1977 to 1982. After another brief break, it came back in 1985 and ran through 1996. Then once again, very briefly, from January to August in the year 2017, it then ran again from August August to September in 2019, and finally yet again from April to September, which is a funny Haunted Mansion joke. If you get it, leave a comment down below. <laughs> but yes, again from April to September in the year 2022. However, this parade was not only in the Disneyland Park, but also in the sister park over in Disney California Adventure, and it ran over there from the years of 2001 to 2010. Now, this parade did a big travel journey all the way down to Orlando, Florida, to the Walt Disney World Resort, where it played from 1977 to 1991, then again from 1999 to 2001, and then finally one more time from 2010 to 2016. 
Now yet again it's doing a big travel all the way over to Disneyland Paris, where it ran from 1992 to 2003. Whoa, this parade has seen a lot of Disney parks. <laughs> That's why everybody knows it. It's just so iconic within the Disney canon. So yes, the Main Street Electrical Parade was a nighttime show that could be seen every single day at the park that it was running in. And the music of this parade is probably some of the most iconic parade music of all time. As the parade danced down Main Street to the iconic Baroque hoedown, it was this iconic techno hoedown, but like, very Baroque sounding music. It's honestly one in a lifetime song. You just have to listen to it. It sounds weird when I'm describing it, but trust me, it's beautiful. Next, moving on to the parade floats because some of these are very beautiful. We start off with the Casey Jr. train, which has Mickey and Goofy and Minnie Mouse. We then see some individual turtles and snails roaming around, followed by Alice and the Caterpillar. Next, we see an entire Cinderella segment, which includes Cinderella's coach, the entire ballroom scene, and her clock tower. We then see a Peter Pan float, which is his pirate ship, followed by Tinkerbell in Pixie Hollow. Next is the Seven Dwarves Mine, followed by Pinocchio's Pleasure Island. Finally ending it off with Elliot and Pete, and then a giant parade float to celebrate America. And while, yes, this is probably the parade that most people think of when they think of Disney parades, especially at nighttime, I honestly do like quite a few other parades a little bit more, only because as time went on, this parade did start to show its age. It would technically stop in the middle of parade tracks and lights would go out all the time. But when it worked beautifully, it worked beautifully. And to this day, I miss the Blue Fairy Parade float, which appeared at the very beginning of the run. So yes, I absolutely love this parade and it absolutely deserves to be in the top half of today's list. But next we move on up to number six on my list, not straying too far from the topic, which is the Tokyo Disneyland Electrical Parade Dreamlight. That is a long title for a parade. <laughs> now, Electrical Parade Dreamlight is honestly very similarly based on the Electrical Parade that we just talked about at number seven. The only difference is a lot of these parade floats are amped up and the technology is so much better on these parade floats. It still contains the Baroque hoedown music that we heard in the original Electrical Parade. However, this parade takes all of the iconic floats from the first one brings it over, but also adds a few brand new beautiful parade floats. So yes, let's get into it. Tokyo Disneyland Electrical Parade Dreamlight runs at the Tokyo Disneyland Park, and it ran from the years 2001 to 2020. It briefly shut down for the pandemic, however it came back in the year 2021 and is still ongoing. And because the title is too long, Dreamlight is a nighttime parade that can be seen regularly at night, and the music in this parade is the same as the Electrical Parade, which I have absolutely no complaints about. I love the iconic original parade music, and so to hear it again with the upgraded floats is an absolute dream. No pun intended. <laughs> Now let's get into the parade floats because these are so beautiful. We start off with the Blue Fairy, followed by some dreamy horses. We next move into the Dreamlights Train, which is a take on the Casey Jr. train. Next is Alice in Wonderland, followed by Tinkerbell and Friends. We then see Elliot and Pete, Peter Pan's ship, Toy Story, Aladdin and Jasmine in Agrabah, followed by the Genie. We then move on to Tangled, Cinderella's Coach and the Grand Ball. But next is probably one of my favorite parade floats of all time, which is the Beauty and the Beast ballroom scene. Oh, this parade float is so gorgeous. Next is Frozen, followed by the riverboat with Donald and Daisy on it. Next is a blimp with Chip and Dale. And finally, we end off the parade with two small world floats. And what I absolutely love about the ending of this parade is that the parade floats actually switch back and forth between all bright white lights, which then transform into into fully colored lights. And this specific detail is very reminiscent of another nighttime parade, which we will be talking about a little bit later on the list today. But that is Dream Lights, friends. And next we are gonna move on up to number five on my list. And yes, we have reached the top five in my favorite parades. If you have any idea which parades are going to end up in the top five, make sure to leave them down below. And now is also a great time to let me know which Disney parade is your favorite. So yes, up next is number five on my list which is probably the parade that I get to see the most often, and lucky me. At number five is the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade. I 
love this parade. It is just an absolute celebration of Fantasyland and all of Disney's most iconic fairy tale characters. The Festival of Fantasy Parade's home is in the Magic Kingdom at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. It ran from the years 2014 to 2020, shutting down very briefly for the pandemic, but then it opened up again in 2022 and is still ongoing to this day. The Festival of Fantasy Parade is a daytime parade that runs very regularly almost every single day, and the music is original to this parade. I absolutely love the music. I think the theme song is so catchy, and I love that it's incorporated into a lot of iconic Disney medleys. But let's move on to the parade floats because some of these are absolutely gorgeous. We start off the parade with a princess gardens float, which includes Belle, Cinderella, Tiana, and the Frozen Sisters. Next we move on to the Tangled Float, which depicts the Snuggly Duckling. It is so fun and wacky. And there are these giant blades that swing back and forth. It's so cool. Up next, and probably one of my favorites, is the Little Mermaid Float, which has Ariel sat atop a very tall clamshell. After Little Mermaid is Peter Pan, which shows Skull Rock followed by a beautiful rainbow, atop which is Peter Pan's ship. And the rainbow lands at the other end to a giant flower on which Tinkerbell is sitting. Following Peter Pan is another iconic float, which is the Maleficent Dragon. Yes, this is the other parade that features a steampunk Maleficent. Amalus isn't necessarily meant to be Maleficent herself, but rather a steampunk version of her that was put together in order to create this celebration that the Fantasyland characters are putting together. She is gorgeous, and she is fire-breathing. It honestly gives me chills every single time she opens her mouth and spits fire. And finally, we end with some classic Disney friends that can be seen on very very beautiful and colorful parade floats, followed by the very ending, which is Mickey and Minnie in a hot air balloon. I love the Festival of Fantasy Parade. I am so lucky and fortunate I get to see it so often, and it is absolutely always a highlight of my day in the Magic Kingdom. Next, friends, we move on up to number four on my list, which is the Paint the Night Parade. The Paint the Night Parade is probably the most technologically advanced nighttime parade that we have ever seen, because there are some floats in this parade that, like, you look at and you're like, how did they do that? How did they do it? It is just gorgeous. Now, Paint the Night debuted in the Disneyland Park over in Anaheim, California, and it ran from May 2015 to September of 2016. It then could be seen again in the Disney California Adventure Park from April to November of 2018. In addition, it could also be seen over in Hong Kong Disneyland from 2014 to 2020. And here's hoping this parade comes back. The Paint the Night Parade was a nighttime spectacular, and it it was spectacular. The music of the parade is a mashup of Disney medleys as well as the iconic song, When Can We Do This Again song, which is found at the end of Wreck-It Ralph. However, keen listeners will also notice that the Baroque hoedown is also mixed into this parade soundtrack, which makes it feel absolutely nostalgic. Now, as for our parade floats, because this one has some really cool ones, the first parade float is Tinkerbell and Peter Pan, and Tinkerbell flies on this float. It is so cool. Trust me, camera work does nothing for this parade float and you have to see it in person. It is so cool to watch her fly. Up next is Monsters, Inc. with a lot of spinning doors. Next we see cars with a giant Mack truck that is filled with lights and they create some really cool shapes with these lights. Up next is Little Mermaid and I love getting to see Ariel with her electric red hair, followed by Toy Story. Up next is a Princess Masquerade float, which includes Belle, Cinderella, and Rapunzel, followed by Elsa's Ice Palace and a Frozen segment. And finally, we end with Mickey and Friends, and let me tell you, the helix that is on the back of Mickey's parade float is mesmerizing, and I could look at it all day. I absolutely love Paint the Night, I have nothing bad to say about it, and I miss this parade so dearly. But next, we're moving on up to number three on my list, one that I'm gonna get to see again very soon, and I'm so excited! Yes, at number three, is Mickey's Boo to You Halloween Parade. Now I know this is just a seasonal one, but I am a Halloween fiend, and so on my personal list of parades, it shoots right up to the top. <laughs> Mickey's Boo to You Halloween Parade celebrates the Halloween season within the Disney parks. It brings out a bunch of classic Disney characters and gives them some really cute and some really goofy costumes. Mickey's Boo to You Halloween Parade can be seen in the Magic Kingdom at the Walt Disney World Resort, and it ran from the years 2005 to 2019, shutting down very briefly for the pandemic once again. However, it did reopen in the year 2022, and it is still ongoing. Now, this parade is a seasonal parade, so you can 
only see it at special ticketed events, much like the Christmas parade, but it usually runs from the months of August to October. However, not every night, only on select nights. Now, the music for this parade is so catchy. It puts you in the perfect spooky vibe to walk around the Magic Kingdom, and it is a constant playlist player that I have around the Halloween months. This music is so good. It has such a great beat. It's just so fun to listen to. Oh, I just love it. But as for the parade floats, we got to get into some of these because they are just spooktacular. <laughs> First and foremost, the parade is led by the iconic Headless Horseman, who gallops down the street on his gorgeous, beautiful black horse. And of course, he carries in his hand his pumpkin head. This is the perfect way to start off this parade, and the parade technically hasn't even started yet. But the parade starts off with some iconic classic Disney characters who are marching down the street, holding up little masks that they have made for the Halloween season. The first float itself contains Mickey and his friends, debuting off their gorgeous Halloween costumes for the season. And they pretty much always switch them up, unless they're in some very specific costume, much like Minnie, Daisy, and Clarabelle, who pretty much always from now on dress up as the Sanderson sisters. But yes, next we move on to Peter Pan and his friends who are dancing in front of a giant treasure chest on which Tinkerbell sits. Up next is Pirates of the Caribbean, which has their own ship Captain by Captain Jack Sparrow, followed by probably one of my favorite segments of all time, which is the Haunted Mansion segment. Yes, Haunted Mansion itself appears in a Disney parade. How could this not make the top three? <laughs> we get to see the bride and the hitchhiking ghosts, and this iconic segment is just so Incredible, I absolutely love it. Up next is a Halloween hoedown, which brings us over to Frontierland for some iconic fun, followed by some Wreck-It Ralph candy mayhem, and ending it off in no other perfect way than the Disney villains. Getting to see the Disney villains, specifically Maleficent and the Evil Queen in this segment, is just... It sends chills up my spine. It is so fun getting to see the villains in the parade, and I only wish we get to see more of them when the villains land opens in the Magic Kingdom very soon. But next we're moving on up to number two on my list. God, how I missed this one. At number two, is the Spectro Magic Parade. Now, Spectro Magic was a longtime favorite for so many, and I missed this one so much beyond words. Spectro Magic was a parade that could be found at the Magic Kingdom at the Walt Disney World Resort, and it ran from the years 1991 to 1999. And after a brief break, it stepped off yet again from 2001 to 2010. The Spectro Magic Parade was a nighttime parade and my god, does this just have all of the nostalgia built up into one parade for me. This one is so gorgeous, and I miss it every single day of my life. <laughs> the music of this parade is probably some of my favorite of all time. The Spectro Magic music just gives you this overwhelming, magical feeling of just dazzling lights and sparkling floats. If you haven't seen a video of this parade before, or if you haven't listened to the soundtrack, please do yourself a favor and check it out. It is just gorgeous. But as for the parade floats, this parade was all about the Spectro Men, who were not Disney characters, but very specific magical beings that brought this parade forward. The parade started with the Spectro Men, who were playing the trumpets, followed by a gorgeous Mickey Mouse float where he had a giant cape. Up next was a fun and funky little jazz club segment, which had the genie, Chippendale, and even the harp from Mickey and the Beanstalk. So cool. Up next was a fairy garden segment, which had Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather. Up next was the Little Mermaid, which saw the one and only park debut of King Triton. Up next were a bunch of Fantasia segments, followed by a grand finale. And this was the other parade that I was talking about before, where the parade floats would switch between bright white lights and switching into a rainbow plethora of colors. This was just so fun because there was one specific float where the three little pigs had these paint buckets. Some buckets would have white sparkling lights and others would have a rainbow pouring out of it. And as they would dip their paint brushes into one of the buckets and start to paint the float, all of the parade floats would change from white into color and then color back into white. This was just such a beautiful parade and I miss the color and the music and just the absolute nostalgic feeling that this parade brought. Oh, how I miss it. I still listen to this parade 14 years after it has closed and I miss it so, so much. But here's hoping that the brand new nighttime Disney World Parade 
brings back a little bit of that magic. But with that, friends, we have reached number one on my list of favorite Disney parades of all time. Have you possibly guessed which one it could be? At number one is Walt Disney's Parade of Dreams. This one is quintessential Disney magic wrapped up in one single parade. This parade debuted in order to celebrate Disneyland's 50th anniversary, and it brought together all of Walt Disney's dreams and put them together in one gorgeous parade. Now, what is so iconic about this parade is that it wasn't just a parade. This parade would go along its parade route and make show stops. The entire parade all at once would halt, and certain parts of the parade floats would transform, which would allow some specific acrobats and dancers to absolutely go all out and give the performance of a lifetime. And after this very brief show stop, the parade would detransform back into its moving counterpart, and the parade would continue on its route. This was a once in a lifetime parade. It was absolutely beautiful. The parade floats were iconic, and we're gonna get into all of it. The Walt Disney's Parade of Dreams debuted at the Disneyland Park over in Anaheim, California, and it ran for the brief time of 2005 to 2008. I am so lucky I got to see this. It was a daytime parade that could be seen very regularly every single day, and the music of this parade was just perfect. It brought all of Disney's most iconic movies to the parade and elevated them in a way that no other parade has before with these absolutely gorgeous acrobatic and dance heavy show stops. The music was just absolutely swelling and it invokes so much emotion to this day even if you just happen to listen to the soundtrack. This parade just honestly sounds like quintessential Disney. But as for the parade floats, we open with the gates of Disneyland, which are surrounded by a bunch of magical beings such as the Blue Fairy, Tinkerbell, Peter Pan, the Fairy Godmother, and the Three Good Fairies. We next move on to a Beauty and the Beast segment, which was a giant grand staircase, atop which was the Rose. Up next was Pinocchio, which had a giant Geppetto statue, holding two puppets who were parade performers. Following Pinocchio was the Little Mermaid, who was atop a giant clamshell yet again, and on the show stops, her clamshell would rise up even higher than it actually did, and her chair became a fountain. Whoa. Up next was this incredibly large depiction of Ursula, who was fully animated and would talk to guests, followed by Alice in Wonderland's Tea Party, of which the table itself was a trampoline that performers would jump across and would perform incredible stunts on, followed by the Lion King float, which was just absolutely beautiful. And as the grand finale for this float, we saw the Disneyland castle, and on the first level of this parade float were the three classic princesses, Snow White, Cinderella, and Sleep Beauty with their princes, but up on the balcony of the Disneyland castle on this float was Mickey and Minnie as prince and princess. God, this parade was just absolutely beautiful. It honestly gives me shivers every single time I listen to the music, and I have nothing but good things to say about Walt Disney's Parade of Dreams. This is the quintessential Disney parade for me. It always will be, and it always has been. And again, even though it ran for such a short time, I miss this one so much, and I am so grateful that I got to see it in person. And I will never forget getting to see this parade and having the Little Mermaid show stop stop right in front of me. Oh, it was, it was like it was meant to be, just getting to see all of these parade performers just go off, but specifically the Little Mermaid one stopping in front of me was just so magical and so perfect. Oh, and with that, friends, we have talked about 15 of Disney's most iconic parades of all time. Thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun talking about all of these absolutely iconic parades. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like this video and subscribe down below so that way you don't miss out on any future videos coming up. And believe me when I say I have a lot coming up. I am not only a big Disney fan, but also a Halloween fan, so I cannot wait to take both of those passions and mash them together for you on this channel. And if you are interested in learning about any of my other Disney favorites, I'm going to put a link up to a playlist of all of my Disney rankings videos so that way you can learn even more of my personal Disney favorites. And I I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I know this topic wasn't necessarily heavily requested, but the parades are probably one of my favorite topics of all times to talk about. And I have to do a selfish video every once in a while and do one that I'm really gonna love. <laughs> so thank you all for allowing me to have the space to talk about these parades because I honestly had so much fun and I can't tell if you guys are gonna know, but like this beam, this face is, it's, it's real. Like I love talking about the parades. <laughs> but again, thank you so much for watching. Please enjoy the rest of your week. Stay magical. And I'll see you all real soon.